Sally YouTube. This video is a little bit of a revenge video because I've already done two videos on the common mistakes that French people make when they're speaking English and I've also done two videos on I guess English words that French people have kind of stolen and use completely incorrectly. So now it's our turn, it's time to talk about the French words that English speakers have taken and reinvented and given a meaning that doesn't mean anything like what the original word means. I don't know if you guys know this but roughly a third of the English language has been derived from French. So give me a thumbs up if you just learned something new today. Um, so it's no surprise really that there are some words that have kind of lost their original meaning over the span of time. But without further ado, I wanna jump into some of my favorite examples. The first word is négligé. And when we ask for this, um, just say we're in a lingerie store or something, we're expecting them to bring out like a little see-through skimpy nighty kind of thing. And you might actually get some strange looks if you go into a French lingerie store and ask for a négligé because it actually means neglected, to be neglected. So they'll have no idea what you're talking about. The next word is touché, like when someone bruises you with a comeback or like, you know, hits you with one of their zingers, you can acknowledge them by saying touché, but they don't use it like that in France. Touché literally means touched and it can mean uh, touché, I was very touché, emotionally moved for example. And it's also what you say when you take a hit in fencing or when your ship gets hit in battleships. The next one, maître de or maître de, um, which English speakers think that refers to a head waiter or yeah, the person I guess in charge of the service at the hotel or restaurant. And I think a lot of English speakers think that that's the full word, but it actually comes from maître d'hôtel, so master of the hotel. So when you're just saying maître d', it just means master of, full stop. So it doesn't really make any sense. The next one is risqué. So I know that we love to use a lot of like French vocabulary to talk about sex or sexy things. So, oh, it's a bit risque, you know, like when something's slightly indecent or could potentially shock people. Either way, it's almost exclusively sexually suggestive. And in France, that would just confuse people if you said something was risque, because for them, it literally just means risky, like in high, high in risk, potential danger, something that's maybe a little bit daring. So yeah, it doesn't at all have the same connotation. The next one makes my life really hard and that's resume. And the reason it makes my life hard is because I'm a career coach now. And so I always have to say your CV or your resume, your CV or your resume, because we've picked up this word resume. Now CV is obviously curriculum vitae, and that's what we used to refer to those, you know, few pages outlining who you are and your work history, right? And a resume has come to kind of mean the same thing, especially in the USA. But in France, a resume does not mean that at all. They say CV, CV. And a resume is literally, it just means a summary. So you can talk about a very good resume of a book, for example. The next one is double entendre, which we think is a sentence that has two meanings with one almost exclusively being like cheeky and sex related. But if you translate double entendre or double entendre in French, it means hair double. The actual French saying for this is une expression à double sens, so an expression of double meaning. I don't know where this one came from, but the word ensuite, we use ensuite to refer to the little bathroom that comes off the master bedroom. And in French, ensuite literally is the word just to mean it next or following that. So like you're following a recipe and it's like, okay, first you chop your onions, ensuite you put your onions in the pan, that kind of thing. I found this one really interesting because I use this a lot, I guess, when we're talking about balls or proms or however you want to call the senior year of high school dances and stuff. So a corsage, we say corsage all the time to mean this um, this flower that you that you put on your wrist, like your date brings you a corsage which is a beautiful flower that he like ties to your wrist. And a corsage in French actually means a bodice. So it's not really at all the same thing. The next one is the word gourmet. So we definitely overuse and strangely use this word in English. So um, anything that's a bit fancy um, in terms of food is very gourmet or a bit weird. We want to sort of up its status. <laughs> it's gourmet. Um, and gourmet would be more closely related to a word in French that surrounds um, someone being like greedy and who, who's hungry all the time and eats a lot of stuff. So kind of has a connotation, but French people would just use the word gastronomique to describe 
what we're trying to describe when we say gourmet. Next one is ooh la la. So English speakers think that ooh la la is very sexual and suggestive yet again like ooh la la, like it's a bit ooh cheeky, you know? And honestly in France <laughs> it's definitely more out, said out of like frustration, disbelief or anger. Maybe surprise, but you'd be much more likely to hear Oh la 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 la, or oh la la, or oh la la, then you would oh la la. The next one is bon voyage. When we say bon voyage, I mean in France you could say this, but it really means you're going on a long voyage. You could say it when I was going from France to New Zealand, maybe like bon voyage, you're going really, really far away for a really long time. But if they're just going away for like a long weekend or something like that, you'd more so say bon séjour, which translates literally to good stay, I think. But yeah, bon séjour is much more appropriate than bon voyage when someone's just going away for a short amount of time or a short distance. When you're at the end of a concert and you want more and you're saying encore, encore well French people don't actually use encore in this way it's it's close because encore means again so I get it but French people say un autre un autre un autre which is another another so they don't even use the word encore the last one is saying something is sauteed so putting it into the past tense like that so you can saute something, that's absolutely fine. Um, so a French person would also saute something. But saying that something is sauteed is exactly like saying something is frieded. <laughs> so those are just some of the French speaking words that we use incorrectly in English. There are many, many, many more that we do use correctly. And if you look close enough, you will find that we have literally, as I said before, effectively a third of the English language derived from French. So you're probably speaking a lot more French than you actually realize. But some of these translations got lost along the way. If you have a question about whether a French word is being employed correctly in English or not, or if you have any other ones that you know of um, that I didn't cover in this video, let me know down below. And otherwise, I'll see you guys next video Wednesday. A bientôt!